Hello everyone and welcome back to another Lone Wolf Politics YouTube video. Today is October 19th, 2020, and in this episode, we're going to be talking about what a Donald Trump victory would look like. As always, don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you like high quality election and political analysis. But let's go ahead and get started. I know that recently on this channel, I've directed a lot of focus towards a Joe Biden victory. And the reason for that is he's up by over 10 points and all signs point towards him winning this election. But it wouldn't be right to completely discount a Trump victory. We see all the time that nearly everyone gives Trump a 10 to 15% chance to win, which is fairly small, but still a sizable percentage. So what did those isolated scenarios look like? Ultimately, in this video, I will discuss Trump's quote-unquote easiest path to victory, even though it's considered unlikely at this stage of the game. So this map here is basically the 2016 results, except for Michigan, and with the eight most important slash closest states in 2020 in green. Now, obviously, the first step of Trump's pathway is to win all of these red states, which shouldn't be too difficult except for Texas and Maine's second district. At this point in the game, Maine's second is actually projected to go to Biden by a lot of forecasters, which isn't a huge loss for Trump, but a loss nonetheless. And Texas is very, very close for the first time in a long time, even though Trump is still the favorite. If Trump somehow lost Texas, his hopes for re-election are out the window, and it certainly doesn't help that early voting numbers in this state are smashing records in certain areas. But at the end of the day, he'll most likely win here by a slim margin, which is something that he must do if he wants any shot. So after that, his battle gets much more challenging, and really two things have to happen. The first is winning enough of these green states to get to 270, which is a given. But the second is he has to make significant gains in a short period of time to get into a position to win some of these states because he's underwater in the polls. In 2016, Trump was within a normal polling error of Clinton on the week prior to the election, and of course, that worked in his favor. But now, even after pollsters have revamped their methodologies, we're way outside of normal polling error territory. Trump has to gain ground quickly, which is very unlikely in this election, specifically because we're so late into the game. However, before he starts worrying about that, he has to capitalize on the two pure toss-up states and the one right-leaning state. He's considered the favorite in Iowa, which is the right-leaning one, but he also needs to win Ohio and Georgia, which will certainly be a challenge. Both of those are considered a coin flip, so he needs to get lucky twice, which isn't impossible, especially considering that he won both last time. After that, though, he has to win Florida. I've always said that Biden is the favorite here, specifically due to big gains in the senior vote, but it's definitely going to be really close this year. And if Trump can continue to build up Latino support, then he has a very real shot of winning this state. If he doesn't, he could win literally every other green state on the map and still lose the election, so it's clear that Florida is a must-win state for him. After Florida, though, it's still significantly challenging. Trump would have to win North Carolina, which is a possibility, but Biden is the slight favorite there, and he'd also have to win... Pennsylvania, and either Wisconsin or Arizona, which is no easy task. 
right? On a holistic level, Trump would need to get lucky over and over again to even scrape by with enough votes to 270. If he doesn't get lucky one or two times, depending on what state it is, his chances drop close to zero. So Biden is definitely in a good position based off the way things stand now. But to put things into perspective, let's take a look at the projected vote share for some of these states. And we can start with Pennsylvania. 538 says that Biden is projected to win by 6.3 points, which is a very large margin for such an important state. Specifically, they say that Biden wins 88% of the time in this state, which is damning news for the incumbent president specifically because Pennsylvania is the most likely state to decide the outcome of this election. So for Trump to have this low of odds in this state is just incredibly bad news. But we can also take a look at states like Florida. 538 says that Biden is projected to win by 3.4 points, which is still a pretty large margin for a state that is historically always really, really close. Specifically, they say that Biden wins 72% of the time in their simulations, which is a very large margin for a state that's supposed to be very, very, very close. So Trump definitely does not like to see those odds there. And that same story continues into states like Arizona. 538 says that Biden is projected to win by just over three points, and in their simulations, he wins 69% of the time, which is just bad news for Trump, considering that this is a traditional conservative state. And similar to Arizona, North Carolina is a, is a similar story where Biden is up 2.6 points or projected to win by 2.6 points, and he wins 68% of the time in 538's simulations. So clearly, Biden is just dominating. And in all of these blue states, if he wins all of these up until Pennsylvania, he will win the election with well over 270 electoral votes. And his smallest margin is Pennsylvania, where he's projected to win by 6.3, which is just bad news for Donald Trump. Right at, at this point of the game, the odds are just stacked against Trump. And he'd have to have immense luck and make a huge comeback, which doesn't really seem likely, right? The odds against him are insurmountable, but not necessarily impossible. But at the end of the day, all of this depends on whether or not people vote, right? Early voting numbers are looking really strong, but if you haven't had the chance to vote yet, make sure that you get out to the polls when you can and when they open up in your state. But that's all I have for today's video. I just want to say thank you so, so much for watching. I truly, truly appreciate it. Don't forget to like and subscribe and drop suggestions for future videos in the comments below. With that being said, I'll see all of you in my next video.